Computers are deterministic machines. They do what they're told. They aren't designed to mess around and generate something random. Computers do what you tell them to do. So let's look at the C program. This comment says that this program should generate a random number. I just told you that this isn't possible, right? This program must be lying. It's impossible to... Oh, it does in fact generate a random number. But how? Did I lie to you? First, before I lose your trust, I have to clarify that this random number isn't really random. It's a sort of false random. A pseudo-random generator, I could say. Pseudo-randomness is a very interesting topic to explore in different programming languages, oftentimes have a different method of generating these pseudo-random numbers. But generally, they all have the same basic idea. The first step is to get a seed. A seed can be anything. It can be the current system time. It can be the number of times it takes the computer to boot up. It can basically be anything. The seed doesn't really matter. It isn't important. It's only used once. The seed's only requirement is that it needs to differ each time you start up the generator. Now, we then need to apply a math equation to the seed. And the result of that math equation is our newly generated random number. Now let's put that into action. Let's say our seed is 5, and our math equation just adds 2 to our seed. Amazing, right? Let's run the random generator once. We get 7. Let's run it again. Uh-oh, we got the same result. Isn't it meant to be random? Well, yes, but we forgot to add the most important part of our random generator. Here's the trick. After we generate the first number, we take the random number we just generated and set the seed to that. Now let's do it again. Our starting seed is 5. We run it once. We get 7 as our output. Now comes our trick. We set the seed to 7, then we generate another random number. We get 9. Then we set the seed to 9, the process repeats. Now we have a number generator that generates a different number each time. Amazing, right? However, this really does not have any use. This number generator is so predictable, I bet I can predict what the generator generates the second time. I bet that it will generate a 9. I was correct! Now let's look at the problems with our number generator. First of all, the seed is always the same. It always starts at 5. Another problem is that our math equation doesn't give a varied enough result. A random generator should be able to produce numbers that are both bigger and smaller than the seed that was used to generate it. Let's first start with the seed problem because this one's the easiest to fix. What we'll always changes on system boot? If you yelled at your screen saying the time, you'd be correct. It'd also be stupid for yelling at a person who can't even hear you. But yeah, the system time is often used as the initial seed. The most common way of measuring system time is Unix time. Unix time is actually very simple. Unix time is the amount of milliseconds that have passed since January 1st, 1970. This unfortunately gives us the downside that our generator won't work before January 1st, 1970. So if you're watching this in the 1960s, tough luck, buddy. Go eat some dinosaur bones and play with the woolly mammoths instead of writing a random number generator. Let's set our initial seed to Unix time. This solves our first problem. Now time to solve the second. Now, the second is a bit more complicated. How do we come up with a math equation that works? To do this, let's think. What about we have a separate equation to regenerate the seed, and we use that seed to generate a number? Okay, this sounds pretty complicated, but I swear it isn't that complicated. I'll just show you the seed code. It's pretty simple. Uh, let's define two math equations to generate our seed and to generate our random number from the seed. Let's call them derive and generate. The regenerate function takes in a seed and generates a new seed. The derive function takes in a newly generated seed and generates a random number. Let's plug these two functions into our rands function and see what happens. Ah, uh, an error. I almost forgot to add our new math equations. Generate x equals x times that number plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Derive x is equal to x divided by that number uh, modulus 3, 2, 7, 6, 8. Okay, I'll explain these two functions. The 
regenerate function seems a bit weird. It only makes the seed go up. Won't this mean our random numbers will only get higher and higher? No. This is all due to our derive function. The derive function divides the seed by 600, 655,036. And then here's the trick. It uses modulus to reduce the value. This gives us a lot of control. By using modulus, we can effectively set the bounds of our random number generator. In this case, I set the bounds to 32,767 as it is the 16-bit signed integer limit. By using modulus, you can set the bounds to any number you like. Now if we combine all our concepts together, we get a very interesting generator that actually works. This really makes you appreciate the thought it takes to make a random number generator. It's a perfect fusion of math and programming that hopefully wasn't too complicated to understand. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you like this random video. <laughs> Have a random day!